Well, I'm a very competitive person. And when I was 19, I decided I wanted to be the best in the world at something. I found marathon swimming at 22 and started swimming the English Channel at 24. And I just love the channel. It's like my spiritual home. And I just wanted to go after amazing records and put my name in history against people I really admire who have done incredible things in, in marathon swimming. Um, what's the biggest challenge when you're doing it? How cold the water is? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Not so much for single crossings, but for double crossings, so that's over to France and back again nonstop or triple crossings. The hardest thing is that I might get hypothermia so severe that I need to be admitted into ICU, so intensive care in hospital, or potentially it's worst case scenario, I could die. So I was hospitalised in 2011 in Canterbury. My core temperature was 28 degrees and I also had swimming-induced pulmonary edema and that's when blood leaks into the lungs from the heart. So it can potentially be a very uh, life-threatening slash challenging sport, but with single crossings, because I'm only in there 10 to 12 hours, that issue isn't really there. And I, yes, so two days ago, I just really enjoyed that swim, that hopefully my final swim and um, I didn't worry about hypothermia at all. So why have you stopped now? Why not go for 45 or 50 or 100? Yes, yes, there's been many people asking me that and um, because I've swum so much, they kind of assume I'm just going to keep going. I think everyone needs to have a point where they can stop and just soak in and feel like they've come to a completion or an end of a journey. And I want to have that with channel swimming. I'm very happy with 44. Um, the, the queen of the channel before me, Alison Street, I admired her so much. Look, I don't feel any need to do, do any more crossings, but in saying that, I am very proud to now have this world record. So if Alison comes back and starts doing the channel more, then yes, I will bump it up to 45 or 50 or whatever I need to make sure Australia has that crown for as long as possible. Ah, now you've said it about how bad it is with the cold. What about jellyfish and big boats? Look, the jellyfish there don't really bother me. I've been stung by deadly jellyfish in the Caribbean, which was much, much worse. The shipping lanes that go through the English Channel, for me, they're just uh, mesmerising. They go in opposite directions. It's the busiest shipping and also ferry lane in the world. So when I'm swimming along, I'm actually sometimes just gazing around it and all the incredible things I can see around me. Uh, for me, it's never really been an issue in my swims. The pilots, that's the, the boat captain next to me with the boat, they're constantly carefully navigating through those shipping lanes. They do it very well. It's very safely managed. The coast guards on the English and French side are in constant communication with my boat captain. And it's the same with other swimmers. Very well managed. OK, so if not the um, English Channel, then, then what next? One would have thought uh, somewhere up the Gold Coast would be much more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I do, I'm an amateur athlete, so I, I don't get paid to do marathon swimming. And I've always been working as well as my marathon swimming career. So I do a lot of keynote speaking to schools and business. And I coach people to swim the English Channel. And it's looking forward to doing more of those things that I really enjoy outside doing laps of the channel. OK, Chloe, congratulations. Well done. Amazing. 44 crossings of the English Channel. I've not even done that on a boat, so it's just absolutely spectacular. Well done, you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.